praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. All right. Just want to come and give honor to God this morning. The second Sunday of the new year, 2024. Amen. 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 Everybody glad to be in this year. Amen. 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 For the scripture reading this morning, I will be reading the entire chapter of Isaiah 12. And it reads, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thy anger is turned away, and thou comforted me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah yes. is my strength yes. and my song. Yes. He also is become my salvation. Amen. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord with the Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Anybody got a song in their heart this morning? Anybody know that God is your strength this morning? No matter what you may be going through, God is your strength. And you should always keep a word of a song in your heart. Amen, amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to come this morning thanking you, Lord God, for waking us all up this morning. Starting us on our way, closing our right mind, leading us to the house of the Lord God. We want to just thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have done. Thank you for forgiveness, forgiveness of sin, Lord God. Thank you for just being God all by yourself. Father God, we can do nothing without you. Father God, so thank you for the bright sunshine and the cool wind that breaks, that blows this morning, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for just coming in and coming into this service, Lord God. We're ushering in the Holy Spirit right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the man that's going to come and bring the word of Zion, Lord God. Thank you for the bread, the matter that's going to come from heaven, Father God. Let us have ears to hear, Lord God. Let us have a heart to receive, Lord God, the message that you have for us. Father God, thank you for the, the musicians and the, the um, praise team, Father God. Thank you for the ushers and the trustees, all the facilities of this church. Father God, thank you for each and every family that's represented here today to come and to receive your blessings, Lord God, and to give you praise, Lord God. We're going to have a praise on our lips this morning because you have been too good to us to sit down on the praise. So anybody got a praise in their heart this morning, show hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, I do pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's praise him this morning. Are you glad to get in the number one more time? Are you glad to be in the number one more time? For he is worthy to be praised.
subject is, is obeying God. Amen. Amen. Obeying God. You can have your seat. We'll be coming uh, from Jonah today, the fourth, the fourth chapter. And we use as our text this morning, verse 11. Should not I spare Nineveh? That great city, wherein are more than six four thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, Amen. and also much cow. It's a question here that we must consider. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word on this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your people praising your name. Now, Lord, we exalt you to come in, Lord, and speak to your people just for a little while, that they may attain some understanding, Lord, that you uh, want them to have. Forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness, Lord, that we may preach your word with clarity, Lord, and with understanding, that you can fill this vessel up, Lord, and use it as you see fit. In the name of Jesus, open up closed ears, Lord, open up the hearts and minds of your people. That may receive your word on this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, uh, this is a very familiar passage of scripture uh, this morning. We know John to be one of the minor prophets of the Old Testament. He's well known for delivering the word to Nineveh. He's well known for being swallowed up by the big fish. We find that sometimes in life, we don't consider uh, that which the Lord has considered. Uh, we find in verse 11, he says, Should I not spare them uh, that great city wherein there is more than 6,000 persons uh, that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand? Uh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are just out of their mind. Right. Some people are just crazy. I might be talking with some crazy folks now. I don't know about it. I've been crazy in my lifetime too. You know? It seems like I couldn't discern my right hand from my left hand. I couldn't see two feet away in front of me because of my own understanding. I liked the way life was, but God dictated something different. Uh, we must consider when we're dealing with God's people uh, how to become a blessing and how to obey God's word to be a blessing unto them. Sometimes God tells us to walk away. Sometimes God tells us to shut our mouths and stay. Sometimes God tells us to sit down. And sometimes he tells us to get up. Uh, sometimes God does things that we don't quite understand without our kidding, folks. A lot of times and many a times in my own life, God does things and, and I have committed things that I thought was wrong and, and knew was wrong according to the word of God. But somehow or another, God turned me around and switched me and placed my feet on solid ground. And he turned me around and shined a light in the path that I must go in. But oftentimes I saw the light shining and I went down another road because I didn't want to follow the light. Y'all have been there with all that got to say that. I'm just talking about me. I think it's testimony time. I don't know. Come on, Come on. Sometimes I say things, uh, people get offended by it. Uh, I say things, it uh, talks about certain groups of folks and they don't like it. I don't care. You know, uh, it's just the way it is. When I was in the world, I talked about things that I wasn't supposed to be talking about before we got married. Sometimes they threw hands, and I threw hands back. <laughs> but now that I'm uh, understanding that I am God's created being, uh, because I've been born again, and God is shaping me, and he's remolding me according to how I humble myself unto his Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, sometimes I might say things that might offend you. Uh, I, might, I might take too long preaching. Uh, I, I, I might I shine a light on you in some way, form, or fashion, and you think somebody done told me something. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I'm just telling you what the word, the word of the Lord has said and revealed unto me. I don't know your business, uh, but God knows your business. The way you know if I'm a man or you know a woman or a man of God is if, if they always in your business, that must be God telling them. If they weren't with you when you committed whatever it was, 
and somehow or another you come to the church and the preacher hit dead on what you were doing, he don't, he or she don't know your business. God is trying to correct you. And you have the audacity to get mad at the woman or man. They don't know what they're preaching. If they are a vessel, they only give you that which God has pulled into them. So if I hit you this morning and you get mad, that's all right. Just keep it moving. God oftentimes tells the people of God, his children, what to tell the world. And many a times he tells us what to tell each other. A lot of times, God ain't told us now. We just talk. Y'all huh? might well come on though with me. We done heard something. And we messing around in other folk business. And God ain't told us now. We done run around and said, you know what the Lord told me? He, the Lord spoke. You don't know that tell that lie. A lot of times, the Bible talks about people prophesying out of their own harm. Yeah. Prophesying out of their own knowledge mm -hmm. and understanding. God ain't seeing nothing. If the truth be told, God told you to go sit down and be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. But we busy by it. Yeah. But that's another lesson for another time. Right. In the name of Jesus. Obeying God, you must know his voice. Yeah. We find that Jonah had Hey, God has spoken to Jonah and told him, get up and go down to Nineveh and, and preach the gospel. Preach the word that I say to thee. Jonah, because of his dislike of the people, Jonah got up and went the other way. I ain't going to tell them for now. Y'all have been like that. I ain't going to need to say that. God told you to get up and go bless somebody. And you said, nah, I told you to give them 100, you gave them 20. <laughs> on a different day than God told you to do it. See, you got to do it the way God said do it. Amen. You can't do it the way Jonah did it. Jonah run. And then the Bible said, I'm not I'm, I'm offended. I'm I ain't going to need to get some people. Go ahead up. God told Jonah, go there and I want you to preach to him. I want you to say this and I want you to say that, you know. We're going to read the book of John Abel. Four chapters. Short chapters. Very to the point. Jonah went on down. Jonah got up and he went the other way. Jonah hopped the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Jonah got on the ship. Now I want you to pay attention. When Jonah got on the ship, he went on into the bowels of the ship. Like and Jonah went on to sleep. Like on that run. No! He won't obey God. He can run. Some of y'all are running, but you're sleeping good. Just because you're sleeping good don't mean you're obeying God. Oh, we got to obey God. Jonah was running away, and then all of a sudden the wind became to blow, and the sea became boisterous, and the men on the ship, on the ship began to become afraid because of what was going on. They said, somebody done made somebody God mad, and they began to cast lots. Meet a day again in the gambling, you know, like you know, have y'all y'all ever shot any dice? Y'all ever shot any dice? Don't play no game with chance. So they cast lots and the lot fell on the Jonah. Many historians try to tell what it was. Some say they, they picked straws. Some say uh, they throw some bones down. And, uh, but they, whatever they were doing, they were doing it in the name of their God. Not, not Frank Jehovah. Uh -huh. Not Yahweh. And so they were doing it in the name of their God, and the light fell on Jonah. And they went to him, they, they got him up, and they told him, they said, what must we do with you? And he said, throw me overboard. Jonah already knew that he didn't obey God. Jonah already knew that the troubled water was coming in his life simply because he did not obey and do what God said do. Jonah did what his own mind said do. God said, go to Nineveh. Jonah jumped up and went the other way. You know how we do. Some of this word, this word ain't for everybody. Some people have jumped up, went to preach. Some people have jumped up, went to ministry. Some people have jumped up, grabbed the mic, and went to sing. 
Some people jumped up and went to become a deacon. Some people jumped up and went to become a trustee. And God ain't told you nothing. You're doing what you're doing out your own heart. That's why you're having such a hard time. I know y'all want more to hear this. Somebody in here right now, God is talking to. That's why he gave me this word. Because I struggled with this. I said, somebody going to get the wrong message and jump up and, and call me and say, the Lord telling me to go preach. And God ain't told you now. The devil talk to you too. And he don't always tell you to do the wrong thing. He tell you to do the right thing so you can get it wrong. Yeah, that's the way he works. But in any event, you're not obeying God. You're obeying the devil. Huh? Y'all tired of it, y'all feelings this morning. You want a stern sermon where we preach about Jesus and the goodness of God yes. and how he brought in and out of unseen dangers. That's what you want to hear, but I'm going to give you what you need to hear. Right. 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 Jonah jumped up and they threw Jonah overboard. I believe Jesus said it in Matthew. He said, hey, God created a great monster. A monster came and, and swallowed Jonah up. A lot of this story said it was a fish or it was a whale or it was this and that. But, but, but we know that whatever it was, it swallowed Jonah up. And the Bible said he stayed there three days and three nights. And Jonah prayed to the Lord. Uh, uh, he prayed to the Lord for some mercy. And God spit, caused a fish to spit him out up on the dry land. A lot of times we're going through our ins and outs because we have went the other way. The other way seems right, but it ain't right to God. I came into the ministry in 1992 or 91, somewhere up in there. Stayed in the ministry 20 some years. I began to think, well, maybe this ain't, because, you know, I was 20 some years, you ought to be able to retire from something, you know. You know, you know, you know um, had to stay under Reverend Timothy and, yeah. and Reverend Waddell, both of them going on now to be with the Lord. Taught me many things over the years. I thought I knew the way, but I didn't know the way. Sometimes they would tell me, son, get up. When you get ready to preach this, read the verse and sit down. No, I got to preach. I got to tell it. Sometimes God requires us to just read the word and sit down. But in any course, you got to do it the way God tells you to do it. God told John, go down and know. Jonah said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to hop a ship and I'm going to go in the other direction. But somehow or another through life trials and tribulation, after that which the fish had swallowed Jonah up, you know, the, the, the scientists say that the whale has two or three different stomachs. You go do one of the, 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 the teeth with it, crunching you up, then you go into one level of the stomach and a little acid there, then you drop down to another level of the stomach. I don't know what level Jonah was in, but the Bible says, spit him up on dry land. Right. Jonah got his suitcase and got on up out of there and went on down to Nineveh. Uh, that's what we need to do when God is telling us to do what we need to do. Is to get our, our tote and get on up and go on down and do what God tells us to do. Uh, sometimes it's to bake a cake. Sometimes it's to make some pork chop. Sometimes it's to bring some tea. Sometimes it's to preach. Sometimes it's to sing. Sometimes it's to do a great duty to both men. But many a time, it's just God telling you to come from somebody. Call them up and tell them about my goodness. But because you don't like me, you won't even call me on the telephone. Sometimes they tell you to visit me in the hospital room. But because you don't like me, you say, well, I ain't going there. I might get cold. Sometimes he tells you to cut 
touch somebody's jaw. Come on. Sometimes he might tell you to fix a car. He might tell you to fix me a hot dog sometimes. But whatever he tell you to do, you do it. And you do it to the fullness that you can do it for the Lord. You're not doing it to me. You're doing it because God told you to do whatever it is for whoever it is. And it oftentimes is somebody that you don't like, that you can't stand. But you got to do it anyway. See, what, what the church has missed is the love of God. We so captured by hate, anger, and strife. We so captured by our own understanding that we miss this word we call love. Amen. Somebody told me that love covers a multitude of sins. See, when you miss this word called love, you won't understand when God tells you to do certain things. I've helped the many of people that I didn't like. Sometimes God had told me to just reach in my pocket and give them what you got. Sometimes I did it, and sometimes I was like, y'all, no. Nah. It's to your own fault because you're going to miss your blessing. Amen. 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 It may be that very person that have done something to you Amen. that God Amen. has told you to go by and bless them. Amen. Sometimes it's not a monetary blessing, but it's just, it's just being in their presence to reassure them of something in your life. And you fighting with yourself. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not actually fighting with yourself. You're fighting with the enemy that's trying to bring up some strife and hate. God is looking for a church of full of love. You can find hate on every step somewhere else. But God is looking for you to change your mindset. He asked him a question in the heaven verse. Should I not spare minimum? Six score thousand. Should he not spare? Jonah was a hard old man. Got some hard old ladies and hard old men sitting there in the church. Don't want to help them back. Than to live. 
because I see somebody repent. And get it right with the Lord by my words. And now I'm angry. Because as long as they were sinning, I had a job. Now they don't got saved. They began to tell me about myself too. They all never felt like that. Little children don't got old now. They began to tell you about your way, you know. Uh, some of them things they couldn't see and understand when they were younger, but now they don't got older and got a little God in them. They come by and try to set you straight. And then you get a lot angry with them. You tell them, don't come back here no more. You've been telling them all your life, do what God said. Now they do what God said. They begin to point the finger at you, showing you what you ain't doing. Amen. Don't become Jonah. Jonah wanted God to kill him. But listen what the Lord says. It says, then said the Lord, does thou well to be angry? So Jonah set out the city and set on the east side of the city. And that made him a, a, a booth and set under it in the shop till, the, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a girl and made it come up over, over Jonah that it might be a shower over his head. To deliver him from his grief. Jonah, so Jonah was exceedingly glad of the girl. God worked a miracle, called something to come over him to, 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 to cover him. Come on. Olive Road is supposed to be a covering for God's people. Y'all understand that? Each one of you, under the sound of my voice, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, once you come into the knowledge of God, you ought to be a covering for somebody else. Amen. It is a miracle that God saved you. God created you for a purpose and a time that God was created to shadow Jonah from the elements and from the, from the sun from burning his head. He was already angry. God is working on Jonah right now. He's working on you right now. You have a covering, and as I am trying to cover God's folks, I pray for those, I pray for you, that God will continue to, to speak to you and deliver you. I cover you, and I bind the hands of the evil one that you can't see that you sometimes are walking with and talking with. It is not God. But I can see it. So I have to continue to be in prayer that God will continue to reveal things to me that I can give it to you, that I can show you the way, and that you might have an understanding of who God is. But some people don't want to come. They want to do it the way they want to do it and how they want to do it. And what happens is they come from under the covering that God has prepared to keep you safe. You come out from under the cover and you run over here and you run over there and you pretend to take up other doctors, other belief structures. And then you want to come back under the cover and, and tilt the cover and move the cover. The God is already set for you. You can't do that. God is prepared to come. No matter whether you like me or not, it don't matter. God prepared me to lead you. You might not like where I'm leading you to, but God has prepared me. He's also have prepared you to lead the fruit that God has set for you from the cover up. Let me say something, Sister White. I ain't gonna like this. Sister Amy. Sister Timberlake. Sister Green Day. Uh, uh, Johnson. Um, they ain't gonna like this. They ain't gonna like this. They ain't gonna like this. Um, but they ain't gonna like this. Can somebody tell me what color my belt is? Black. Black? <laughs> she got a good guess. <laughs> she got a good guess. 
Can you tell me what color the buckle is? Yellow. Huh? Silver. You didn't get it right that time. You can You know why you can't tell me what color the buckle is? It's, it's covered up, right? Well, why y'all keep running around telling everybody else's business that you're supposed to be covered? My robe is covering me up, so you can only guess. Why you why you running around telling everybody else's business? Wanna be in trouble in your life simply because you ain't obeying God the way. I know somebody gonna say he done messed up, he come out of the pool pit. Well, God's, God's house is a pool pit. You can't wait to get out and tell somebody your business. If you heard it, cover them. Pray for them. If you saw them, cover them. Pray for them. You ain't got to run out of everybody's business. That's not obeying God. That's causing confusion and division in the house of God. Well, I suppose to expose the but maybe I need to expose some of you. I ain't gonna need to look down now. Jesus. Ain't no way in the Bible that Jonah went really and told anybody anything that God had told him. He just didn't want to go and do it. So the Bible said God created a girl that was over his head. Let it on what God did. He sent a worm. Because Jonah wouldn't repent. He wouldn't get at his heart, get right because of the hate. If you don't repent and let God get your heart right, there is a worm that can be created and come and eat that blessing God has put over your head to cover it. He will eat it up and the sun will beam back on your head right. to which you wish you was dead. All you got to do is humble yourself and stay under the covering. All you got to do is humble yourself and continue to cover folks. I don't try to come in and expose folks. I expose sin according to how God give it to me. If I talk about the drug addict or the drug dealer or the whoremonger or the homosexual or, 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 or the, the one that likes to fight, the one that likes to, to stay in the trouble all the time, I'm talking about what God's word is saying. You won't be able to enter into the kingdom. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your action. If you repent, and allow the Holy Spirit to get in your life, then I ain't talking about you no more. Amen. Some people run around mad at the preacher because they said something about murderers or they said something about thieves or liars or, or whoremongers. All of us come from somewhere and all of us is in something. There's something in all of our lives, but God has covered us. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. We are not saved by our own might, but by the power of God. So if we are saved and we have the Holy Ghost, then we are to obey God's word. Not some of it, but all of it. God said, should I not have saved the children of Nineveh? Should I not have saved all these people because you didn't like them? Go and read the fourth chapter. Go and read the eleventh verse, or was it the ninth verse? I've forgotten. Go and read it. He said, "Should not have saved." It, the end of the book of John ended with an open-ended question. Go read it. The end of the book was a question mark. <laughs> that struck me when I read it. I preached this sermon many times, but
But for some reason or another, that question mark stood out. Should he not save the world? Should he not save that one you don't like? That one that hindered you in some way, form, or fashion? That one that stole from you? That one that murdered your dreams? That one that, that one that blocked your way? That one that kept you from getting that job? Should he not save that one? And just save you? All of us is Jonah. All of us have been swallowed by the fish of life. All of us have went through some things. All of us have been spit out on dry land. Should he not save those that have thrown you in the water? Our life calling is to obey God. I say it a lot. If anything that you can remember, obey God. I'm not telling you to go out there and preach. I'm not telling you to teach. I'm not telling you to minister. I'm not telling you to join our growth. I'm not telling you to join the choir. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm telling you, the only thing I'm telling you to do is to obey the voice of God. Not the voice of the Savior. Not your own voice. But obey the voice of God. Obey what God tells you to do. I don't care how insignificant you think it is. Maybe God, Michael, maybe God told you to go to school. Right? Maybe that's what he told you to do. Obey God. Do the best you can. I need to reach back and do some more. Yeah. Whatever you are in life, obey God. And do according to what God has told you to do. Don't worry about what he told me to do. A lot of folks try to get me straight. Some people say, you ain't got to wear the road no more. Some say, you ought to wear the road. Some say, you should come out the pool bit. Some say, you should stay there, but you all right. You can go out. Y'all don't know what to do with what. Y'all don't know what to do with me. Come on. I'm gonna tell you what to do with me. Leave me alone. All right. <laughs> Leave each other alone and start obeying God. That's where your blessing is. I'm not in your way. You say you won't you won't close out. <laughs> you wanna leave you wrong, get on up and down on out. All of them made a little blessing. You know. Listen. You're going to have to, and I'm serious now, each one of us, you're going to have to face God for yourself. I'm not going to be around. You're going to have to face God. Believe it or not, you're going to have to face him for yourself. Amen. Your pastor, your bishop, your prophetess, your apostle is not going to be there when the devil angel comes. When the devil angel comes, your body is going to sleep. It's going back to the earth. You don't believe it? Watch when it comes. Your spirit going back to who that sin, and that's God. Amen. Revelation twenty one says that was a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, a dawn. And later on in the verse, it talks about no more crying, no more devil. Talk about all the good things. God shall wipe all the tears away. Everybody, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then it says, but the unbeliever. <laughs> Go on down and uh, talk about listing folks. Shall they, they, they'll be cast in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Then in another place, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. But everybody's not going to be with God. Amen. Believe it or not, there's a place designed for us. Yes. And there's a place designed for you. Amen. Whoever you are, 
there's a place for you. Whoever you are. I can get up here and preach a lot, and y'all can go with it for 30, 40 years. When I die, I'm going to have to face God for that life. Be real with God. Be real with me. Don't like coming here? Go find somewhere else. I would rather you be in a happy place than be in a place of conflict. Where you can't even say amen. Sister, you behind me, you say amen. If there's one under the sound of my voice that wish to come to the Lord, where you come. That we should give your life to the Lord where you come. I'm not talking about all the form of fashion and we got to go through these religious uh, uh, rituals. I'm just going to pray for you. I'm just going to try to lead you to Christ. And it's up to God whether he accepts you or not. Because he knows whether your heart is real or not. Coming a corn. 
Father, we're asking, Lord, that you reveal, Lord, your way unto them, Lord. Father, we're asking, Lord, that you open up a shine of light from heaven right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Expose, Lord, that weakness, Lord, that they have in their life, Lord. Lord, we're asking, Lord, you send your ministering angels by, Lord, to help them minister to them, Lord, to give them that which they need, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Only you know, Lord, and only your way, Lord, counts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Somebody is looking for financial gain. Somebody is looking for the save their marriage on this morning. Somebody is looking, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you show them, Lord, right now. Show them what they need, Lord. Talk to them, Lord. Direct their path. Hallelujah. Now, Father, somebody is sitting in here just as we were. All tangled up. All crooked, Lord. Don't know how to live, Lord. Lord, you had to reach way down and pick us up out of our own thinking. Father, you had to reach way down and pick us up out of the mind of mark in the clay, Lord. Lord, you had to change our direction. Lord, you showered us, Lord, and clean us up by the blood of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we're asking right now, Lord, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to clean them up. Lord, that you pick them up out of the mind of mark in the clay. See your spirit, Lord, that it may have power in this life. See your anointing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We count it done. In the name of Jesus, we count it done. Hallelujah. If you believe that, say amen with me. Amen. What my minutes to go? Sister Cheryl, Minister Cheryl, come on back up here. Come on back up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want, I want you to close us out. Close us out today. I want to thank you, Father, for what I've heard, what I've heard, what I've eyes have seen, what our hearts have seen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to come honoring you, giving you honor, glory, and praise for this day, Father God. Thank you for the young man that came for someone else, Father God. Lord, train up a child, you said, Lord, and the way they should go. When they're old, they will not be. So I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for just allowing him to come on behalf of someone else. Father God, we want to thank you for this day and let us go out and worship and praise your name and spread the love that you have given to us. In the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you.